Hi everyone, Brie here from Estractuarial, and in this video I'm going to be answering some questions that I've received from various different sources, um, and they all relate to studying for actuarial exams and getting an actuarial job and stuff like that. Um, you can probably imagine that I get tons and tons of questions about this kind of thing, so I thought some of the answers would be really helpful to share on YouTube so that everyone can see the answers and take advantage of them. So if you're writing exam P soon or exam FM or maybe you're looking for your first actuarial job, well subscribe to the channel and hit the notification button so that you don't miss out on any of the videos that I release in the future. I talk all about actuarial exams and uh, study strategy as well as getting your first actuarial job and an internship on this channel. So if you don't want to miss that, subscribe and hit the notification button. Okay. Let's get into the first question. So the first question today comes from one of the study strategy members named Ahuva. And Ahuva says, I was wondering when and how much should I round a number? With many examples, the answer could be completely different if rounded too much or too little. Is there a general rule? Now Ahuva is studying for FM, but this really applies for any actuarial exam. So. I don't really recommend rounding any of the numbers uh, before you're done the full calculation. What you should do is you should save your numbers exactly in your calculator. And I'm going to show you how to do that on um, both my favorites. Um, if you haven't watched my video about the, my favorite calculators for exam P and FM, definitely go search that on the channel and you'll find it because that'll be really helpful for you. So one of them is the TI-30XS and on this one in order to save a number what you're going to do is let's say we have 5.5 that's the number that we want to save so in order to save it we just press store and we select an X Y Z A or sorry T A B C there's seven spots where you can save a number and you just do it by clicking this button so let's say we want to save this number in C, I'll press enter, and now C is defined as 5.5. So if I want to use this later, I can go 6.5 uh, plus, and then to recall the number, I go like this. And now we have C there, if I press enter, it is going to add my 5.5 to 6.5 and we get 12. So that's how you do it on the TI-30XS and the BA2 plus is the one I recommend you get for exam FM. On this calculator, let's say we want to store 8.5 so we have it there. Hopefully you can see that 8.5 um, and then you're going to press store. Now with this calculator, you can actually store up to nine digit, or sorry, ten digits because each of these zero through nine buttons, each of those will store a number. So, so 8.5. Now if I want to store that, I'll press store and then maybe I'll select four. Now 8.5 is stored in number four. So now if I want to use it, if I go 2.5 plus uh, recall 4, we get 8.5. I can press enter and we'll get 11 there. So that's how you store full numbers. Now the examples that I gave weren't didn't have a whole bunch of decimal places, but I definitely recommend that you use those functionalities so that you can save the full precise number when you're doing exam questions. And then once you get to the end, you'll probably, hopefully, end up with the exact answer that is provided in the SOA solution or the multiple choice options. All right, so the next question here is from Sana. And actually this was just submitted to me today. Sana is one of my email subscribers, which means that he gets studying tips and tricks sent to him through email regularly. If you want to get those emails, you can sign up. I'll leave you a link in the description below. But Sana asks, I passed my P exam in May and now I'm thinking to attempt FM in August. 
I also work in an actuarial firm from 9 to 6.30 every day. Is it possible to complete the course in such a short time or do I go for the October exam FM? Well, this is a really good question. I'm recording this video on June 20th. So that means that Sana would only have a month and maybe a couple weeks, two to three weeks to prepare for the exam. Since Sana is working nine to 6.30 every day, it's going to be really difficult for him to fit in quality study time regularly. He has other stuff going on too, I'm sure, plus work. And studying takes a lot of time, so I would really recommend that Sana doesn't write the exam in August. Usually I recommend studying for at least 12 weeks, especially if you have a really busy schedule, but usually 14 weeks or maybe even a bit longer, depending on how much you're going to be able to study. But definitely for most people, one and a half months isn't going to be enough to be fully prepared. The other thing is, a lot of people don't want to waste that $225 registration fee. If you really don't want to waste that money, then I definitely recommend going for the next sitting because writing in a month and a half probably won't give you enough time, but it is possible for some people. It's just a risk. And especially since Sana hasn't even started to study yet, he has no way of knowing whether the material is jiving with him, whether he's going to be able to get questions right pretty quickly and stuff like that. So it's really hard to tell at, before he's even begun studying whether or not he'll be ready for October, or sorry, for August. So Sana, I recommend that you write your exam in October. Okay, the next question I have here is from Alexis, and she is actually part of my Facebook group. I have a Facebook group where I put out daily exam P and FM questions. There's one for exam P and one for exam FM. If you want to get in that group, go to Facebook and just search daily exam P questions or daily exam FM questions and you'll find the group. So Alexis says, I am strongly considering a career change to actuarial science. I love math and the career compensates well. I also believe I'd enjoy it because it appears to also match my personality traits. I am considering a Master of Arts in Actuarial Science. Would you agree that obtaining this degree would be necessary for job placement? Now some of you might already know my opinion on this if you've watched my other videos, but I definitely say no, it is not worth it to go back to school to get your Actuarial Science degree. Because most employers, they don't really care what your degree is, what they care about is that you pass exams. So if you can pass exam P and FM, you'll likely have a good chance of getting an actuarial internship. Now, actuarial exams aren't everything. There's lots of other things that you can do to increase your chances of getting an internship. And you should watch the video that I uh, released a few weeks ago about how to get an actuarial job. But having those two exams passed will put you in a really good position. And they're not going to care what degree you have because you've already proven that you can understand actuarial related math. So no, I don't think that Alexis should go back to school. It's also going to take her way more time to learn everything that she needs to by going to school. Right now we're in an age where everything is on the internet. There's so much you can learn just from doing some Google searches. Khan Academy is a great resource for learning calculus and algebra and anything you need for the first few exams. So if you're really serious about writing your actuarial exams and you're kind of wondering whether you should go back to school, I don't recommend that you do. Okay, on to the last question for today. So Vince is a YouTube subscriber and he says, for exam P, you should spend an average of six minutes on each question. I find that at times the solution requires several double integrals, which for me takes more than six minutes to calculate. Any advice on cutting the time down? Okay, so, so Vince is absolutely right. Six minutes for exam P questions is the average amount of time you should spend for each question. But that means that some of the questions are going to take longer than that and other ones are going to be much shorter. 
So if you're having trouble with the same sort of thing, certain problems take you longer than six minutes, I wouldn't worry too much about it, but there is a way that you can work on cutting your time down. And this is the technique I will use for study strategy program members all the time. So what you should do is find 15 questions that are related or have the concepts that you're having trouble with. And then you should go through all those 15 questions in an hour and a half. Now, it's since those are the kind of questions that you're having difficulty with, it's unlikely that you're going to finish them all in an hour and a half, but it's good to have that time pressure and just practicing with a timer so that you know how long you're taking. But go through those 15 questions. And what you'll find is that when you do 15 questions on the same topic in a row, you're going to start to recognize patterns and you're going to see that it's easier to solve them as you do more and more and more of those, kind, of those kinds of questions. So this is a really easy strategy, but it works really effectively. So I'd highly recommend you try it if you're having trouble getting in the six minute mark for any types of questions. So those are all the questions for today. If you have a question, you can leave it in the comments below this, this uh, video and I will answer it. And I may even put it in another video in the future. And yeah, I'd absolutely love that. So if you have anything related to studying, uh, study strategy, exam P or FM, getting an actuarial job, anything like that, I'd be happy to answer. And if you want those study strategy tips, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get those emailed to you regularly. Okay, that's it for this video. See you in the next one. Bye!